blessed and highly favored. Let it rain. Let it rain. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, this is your day. To die to yourself. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is good all the time, amen? Are you refreshed and not refleshed? Amen. It's the refreshing of the Lord in His presence. We fight for His presence. You know, we ask for His presence, but you got to fight for His presence. Because we are hard-pressed on every side of the demonic realm. Constantly influencing, constantly impressing, constant. It's a constant fight. We live in a fallen world. Amen? But thank God Jesus disarmed the principalities and powers of darkness to those who walk according to his will and way. See, you don't have victory without walking right. Amen? In Colossians chapter 2, would you go there with me, please? We are not only in perilous times, but we are in glorious times. Glorious. You know, there should be a desire within us to want to not only know more, but have more. When that desire is removed, it's replaced. Every say, everybody say, when a desire for more is removed, it's replaced. And it certainly, it's not replaced with something from God, I'm going to tell you right now. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and do what? Destroy. The first thing he does is steal. He's a thief. And he loves to proclaim himself as God. And he loves to be worshipped. That's the voice of the stranger and the powers of darkness. And there's a Luciferian agenda that's establishing and is actually manifesting in a more powerful way than ever. We are seeing it all over. And too many believers are not fighting. Too many believers are still building their own empires. They believe because God blessed them, that's all they need to do. They're looking for God's blessing, but not able to battle. Amen? See, that's when blessings turn into curses. Because they become idols. People begin to worship their own blessing instead of the blesser. They begin to give God glory for the blessing but then don't give him glory for what he's done with them. Does everybody understand? See, there's an area in difference. One of the things the Holy Spirit said to me, he said, Guy, he said, many have sight, but don't see. I said, what? He said, yeah, he said, many have sight. I've come to bring sight, but even though I've come to bring sight, they still don't see. I thought, wow. He said, sight has to do with the physical but people don't see spiritually. Why? And he said, because that's why they go into traps. Because they're really not seeing. He said, I'm calling a time for seers. I'm bringing a time of increase. That means that there must be an increase of everything, an increase of God's presence, an increase of being able to see. Why? Because the enemy is increasing. And when you're not willing to want to increase, then the enemy begins to steal. And then people do foolish things. They begin to fulfill themselves. They begin to do things that are dumb, according to the eyes of God, but pleasing to themselves. Because selfish pleasures begin to overtake hunger and thirst for him. And in Galatians chapter 2, is everybody there? And verse 8, would you read it with me? Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and Empty deceit according to the tradition of what? Men. Is everybody there? Okay. According to what? Traditions of men. According to the what? Basic principles of the world and not according to Christ. This is what's happening right now. 
It's happening more and more. People work their butt off to gain. You know, the Lord says so many things in this area where people may have sight, but they don't see. They don't see what's coming. They don't see what's pleasing God. They don't see. You know, even the book of Malachi, it says, who will rob God? Who will rob God? He said, you rob me from tithes and offerings. See, people don't see those things. They just give what they think they should give. And they wonder why God's anointing is not with them. They wonder why they got to struggle all the time. Because people rob God, not only of the financial, but of his glory. See, because many people proclaim themselves have done something. Look what I've done. Instead of look what he's done. Basic principles of the world and, and not according to Christ. Verse 9, would you read it with me? For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are complete in him. Everyone say, I'm complete in him. Amen. Who is the head of all principality and power. In him you are also circumcised with circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Buried with him in baptism in which you also were raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. And you being dead in your trespasses and on the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Everyone say, I'm forgiven. forgiven. As long as you repent. Amen. But repent means to turn away and don't do it again. Hallelujah. Verse 14. Having wiped away the handwriting of requirements that was what? against us, which was contrary to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. So let no one judge you in food or drink or regarding a festival or a new moon or Sabbath, which are a shadow of things to come, but the substance is what? Christ. Now I want you to understand what the word Christ means. It means anointed one and his anointing. So it's about when the Christ came. See, people are still looking at a man when we got to begin to look at a Christ came. The Christ is eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. So the three things that God came, his presence, his truth, and his power came all packaged up right in a body that was created by the word and labeled with the name of Jesus. Somebody get it? That is the substance, Christ. So Christ means the anointing. And without the anointing, you and I are nothing. We're nothing without the eternal presence of God Almighty, the power of God Almighty, and his truth. We're nothing. Amen? All right. Let's go a little further. Verse 18. Let no one what? Cheat you of your reward, taking delight in false humility and worship of angels, intruding into those things which he has not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, and not holding fast to the head from whom the whole body is nourished and knit together by joints and ligaments, grows with the increase that is from God. Therefore, if you died with Christ from the basic principles of the world, why, as though living in the world, do you subject yourselves to regulations? Do not touch, do not taste, do not handle, which all concern things which perish with the using according to the commandments and doctrines of what? Men. These things indeed have an appearance of wisdom and self imposed religion, false humility, and neglect of the body, but are of no value against the indulgence of the flesh. In other words, there are so many religions and so many things that are out there, but God's just requiring relationship. Amen? It's not how many times a day you pray. It's not what you do for God. It's whether you know Him. 
Because if you know him and you know his voice, then you're going to be obedient. That's all it's to it. And if you love him, you're going to obey. And if you're connected, see, one of the things the devil comes to steal is your connection. He connects. That's why people run to medication. Let me tell you, medication disconnects. I've seen many believers get into an accident. They start taking pain medication. Instead of taking off of it, they get more. Because see, pain medication actually makes you more sensitive to the pain. So then they got to double up. Then the doctor doesn't replace it. Then they hit the streets. They try and find the dope on the, on the streets or whatever to fulfill and get rid of the pain. But it's nothing but a stinking lie. And when people start taking medication, it brings a disconnect. Because you can't hear clearly. You can't see clearly. Then there's a false relationship. And the only thing they can have a relationship is with the letter and not the presence. And there's a difference. Because the presence carries everything. The presence is the word. The presence is his glory. It's his love. It's his power. It's everything. And when he leads you, he confirms. He'll tell you what to read. He'll tell you where to go. He'll tell you what's what. He'll tell you what book to buy. I'll never forget when the Lord told me to get this book. I said, I don't want to read this book. I don't read the Bible. He said, look, I'm bringing this book to you because this person spent 40 years walking with me. And you can learn, learn in two hours what took this person 40 years. Whew, I said, send them. I'll read them all. And I did. I never read so much in my life. Why? I want more. Don't you want more? Yes. Then you got to stay hungry and thirsty. The word says anyone who's thirsty and hungry for him, for his righteousness, amen, will do what? Be filled. Seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things will be added. We don't have to be beggars. We just got to be believers. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Are you ready? See, one of the things the enemy wants to do is cheat you from your next level. Everyone say higher ground. I'm going to higher ground today. And that's what the Holy Spirit is releasing. He's releasing people to, get to a higher ground. How many of you know you can see more when you get higher to the higher ground? <laughs> you can see more when you're filled with God's presence. Amen? Man, you can see all kinds of... There's a time when God's presence will come and I can see everything. And if I was to expose everything, there wouldn't be too many people left here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But God's got a plan. Amen. And it's not to bring people down, it's to bring them up. Amen. Amen. But we want to see what's going on, don't you? Amen. So there's a, a, a difference between sight and seeing. The Bible says we do not walk by sight Amen? But by faith. Why? Because faith is seeing. There's a difference. You see spiritually. It's a total different thing. 2 Corinthians 10. We're going up to the high places. Glory to God. I'm going to tear down principalities. See, you got to get down to get up. Amen? It's called humble. Do you see everybody getting down here today? Yo! <laughs> Glory! They were going to a warfare dance, man. They were getting down to get up. 2 Corinthians 10, 10 verse 12, please. Higher ground. Jesus is bringing us to higher ground, if you're willing. Verse 12, is that what I said? All right, let's read it. For we dare not class ourselves or compare ourselves with those who commend themselves. Hello. But they, measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves, are not wise. I'd like to see you repeat that six times. 
Verse 13. We, however, will not boast beyond measure, but within the limits of the sphere which God appointed us, a sphere which is especially includes you. For we are not overextending ourselves as though our authority did not extend to you, for it was to you that we came with the gospel of Christ, the gospel of Christ, the gospel of Christ, the gospel of Christ. What's he talking about? What did Jesus talk about the whole time? He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. That was the whole gospel of Christ. Yes, he came to pay a price, but he was releasing the eternal presence and power of truth of God Almighty. I came to bring you a sword. I didn't come to bring you peace, he said. I come for you to kick butt on the devil. Amen. You're called to battle. Amen? We're not called to tiptoe through the tulips. <laughs> Amen? We're not called to just be blessed. We're, to be, we're called to be a blessing. Amen. Glory. Oh, glory. Are you ready? Not boasting of those things beyond measure that is in other men's labors. Verse 15. But having hope that as your faith is what? How many of y'all know when God wants to increase your faith? Yes. So if he's going to increase your faith, you know what he's going to do? Increase your sight. We shall be greatly enlarged by you in our sphere to preach the gospel in regions beyond you and not to boast in another man's sphere of accomplishment. But he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. For not he who commends himself is approved, but whom the Lord, what? Commends or brings increase. Increase. In Psalm 18, Elijah desired a double portion. He wanted more. And he was willing to do whatever it took. And, and what was released to him, it says, if you see me when I take off. Amen? If you do what? See, if you see me, then you're going to get it. But if you don't see when it happens, you ain't getting it. Amen? Glory. Psalm 18, verse 13. Let's speak it. The Lord thundered from heaven, and the Most High uttered His voice, hailstones and coals of fire, he sent out his arrows and scattered the foe, lightnings in abundance, and he vanquished them. Then the channels of the sea were seen, the fountain, foundations of the world were uncovered. <clears throat> at your rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of your nostrils. He sent from above, he took me. He drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy, from those who hated me, for they were too strong for me. They confronted me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my support. He also brought me out into the broad place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. The Lord did what? Rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands. He has recompensed me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not quickly and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his judgments were before me, and I did not put away his statutes from me. I was also blameless before him, and I kept myself from iniquity. Therefore the Lord has recompensed me according to my righteousness, and according to the cleanness of my hands in his sight. With the merciful you will show yourself mercy. <clears throat> With the blameless man you will show yourself blameless. With the pure, you will show yourself pure. And with the devious, you will show yourself shrewd. For you will save the humble people, but will bring down the what? Haughty. For you will, for you light my what? Lamp. <clears throat> the Lord my God, my God will enlighten my darkness. For by you I can run against a troop. By my God I can leap over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who what? Trust in him. For who is God except the Lord? And who is a rock except for our God? 
It is God who arms me with strength and makes my way perfect. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer and sets me on what? Is that higher ground? Yes, he sets me on higher ground. He teaches my hands to make what? War. So that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. Higher places is higher ground. It gives you more advantage. But to get to that place, he will need to increase the anointing. Does everybody understand that? He will need to increase the anointing. That means there's got to be a place where we have a pure heart and clean hands. A pure heart and clean hands. God is always trying to bring us to another level. He's always trying to bring... The only get way you get to another level is another level of death. Denying yourself. Is everybody okay? Glory. And Genesis chapter 19... Increase from God is, change, is a changing of faith. Does everybody get it? It's an increasing of faith. Jesus came to bring sight to the blind, but again, he said, there are those who have sight but don't see. Those who have sight but don't see. There's got to be, there's a new attitude of the Holy Spirit that's coming. It comes with a higher ground. It comes with a more desire to be clean. It comes with a more desire to be obedient. It comes with a more desire to know him. In Genesis 19 and verse 15. <clears throat> Is everybody there? It says, when morning dawned, the angels urged Lot to hurry, saying, Arise, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, lest you be consumed in the punishment of the city. And while he lingered, the men took hold of his hand, his wife's hand, and the hands of his two daughters, and the Lord being merciful to him. And they brought him out and set him outside the city. So it came to pass when they had brought them outside that he said, Escape for your life. Do not look behind. Do not what? Listen, you want to increase, you cannot look behind no more. You must come to a final decision that this is it, I'm done. No more looking behind. I'm done. I want to be brand new. I want to be a new creation. I want to continue to increase as a new creation. I want to be in his image and likeness. I don't want to touch the things of behind. You know, the board says that bad company corrupts good habits. Amen? Listen, it doesn't have to be bad company. It could be good company, but not righteous. They can corrupt righteous habits. Oh, they all go to church. They're good people. Yeah, right. Is that why they're still doing those stupid things? See, there's a difference in sight and seeing. Why do they still smoke? Why do they still tattoo themselves? Why do they still do all kinds of stuff that's displeasing to God? Because they don't seek God first. There's a disconnect. Does everybody understand that? Why do people dress the way they dress them to try to bring lust? Amen? There's a disconnect because they don't see. There is. They do not see. They may have sight, but they don't see. Is everybody okay? Amen. Why do people still touch unclean things? Why do people still curse? Why is there still disobedience? Why is there still disrespect? Amen? In the kingdom of God. Because there's a disconnect. There's sight, but no seeing. And they cannot get to the next level of higher ground. Amen? And everybody reaps what they sow, no matter what. Even after you repent, you're still going to reap something. But all things can be turned to the good, can't they? In verse 17, so it came to pass when they had brought themselves outside that he said, escape for your life. Do not look behind. Don't do the same things that the world does. Don't look behind. Don't touch those. Don't stop it. Come out from among them. You, nor stay anywhere in the plain. Escape to the what? Mountains, lest you be destroyed. Then Lot said, please, no, Lord, my lords, 
Indeed, now your servant has found favor in your sight, and you have increased your mercy, which you have shown me, by saving my life. But I cannot escape to the mountains, lest some evil overtake me and I die. See, now this city is near enough to flee to, and it is a little one. Please let me escape there. It is not a little one, and my soul shall, is it not a little one, and my soul shall live? And he said to him, See, I have favored you concerning this thing also, and that I will not overthrow the city for which you have spoken. Hurry, escape there, for I cannot do anything until you arrive there. Therefore, the name of the city was called what? Zor. The sun had risen upon the earth when Lot entered Zor. Then the Lord rained brimstone and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of heaven. So he overthrew these cities, all the plain, all the inhabitants of the cities, and, were, and what grew on the ground. But his wife did what? His wife did what? Looked back behind him, and she became a pillar of what? Salt. Wow. She became a pillar of salt. Again, people looking. Can't get to higher ground while you're still looking back. You must be completely fixed on the Lord. Every decision that you get to make, you must get direction. Lord, is this what I'm going to do please you? Does everybody get it? Every decision is what I'm doing going to please you. If you don't get an answer, what do you do? You wait. Amen? You wait till you get one. And if you don't get one, go to the office that the Lord has established over you. Amen? We must get to a place where we are carrying the attitude of the Holy Spirit and completely fixed on the Lord. How many of y'all know we're going to be judged by our intent? We're judged by our intent. People think they're just going to be judged by their actions. No, you're going to be judged by your intent. Psalm 16. Hallelujah. Everybody okay? Good. Because we want to learn so we don't get burned. The devil comes to steal. That's called burn. Amen. In verse 7, 16, 7. Let's speak it together, please. When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be what? I'm in Proverbs, hallelujah. That sounded good, though, didn't it? <laughs> I was wondering why I was the only one reading it. <laughs> Praise God. Let's try that again. Verse 7, Psalm 16. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My heart also instructs me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me. I love that. I love that. People make decisions. Ah, oh, just don't. That ain't, that ain't no relationship. That's not submission. That's not respect. That's not love. That's not the fear of the Lord. I'm just going to do that. I think I'll just do this because... No. What did you say, Lord? Obedience is better than sacrifice. My sheep know my voice. We look to at, find out what he's saying. We seek to find out what he's saying. What are you doing, Lord? Listen, the worst thing you can do is be successful in the wrong assignment. And many people are. And it won't account to nothing for them when they get before the Lord. He said, I didn't tell you to do that. You just did it because you thought it was pleasing me. But it's not what I called you to do. Glory. Verse 8 again. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall what? Not be so if he's not before you, can you be moved? Yes. Has everybody got it? Everyone say, if the Lord's not before me. I can easily be moved. Only when he's before me can I not be moved. Higher ground. 
Amen? Higher ground. Psalm 24. Psalm 24. Verse 3. You know, if you love someone, do you respect them? Amen. And he says, I love you, Lord. I'm doing my own thing. That's not respect, is it? That's not reverence. That's not honor. What does he say? Lean not on your own understanding. Bury it. You're supposed to bury your old understanding with your old man. Amen? Verse 3. Speak it with me. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord, or the what? Higher ground. Or who may stand in his holy place? He who has what? Clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who what? Seek him and who seek your face. That's connection. Connection. Glory. Well, you got to be humble though, don't you? Humble is the area of, he was a pure heart, must be a humble. His hands must be clean. It's always making sure that he's not doing something that's touching or connecting himself or disconnecting Connecting to the world and constantly disconnecting himself from the world and constantly keeping connected to the Lord by always keeping him in front of us. In 1 Samuel chapter 10. You know, it's amazing. People's respect in the world is by wealth. A man is respected by how much money he has in the world. And wealth diminishes. In fact, the wealthy are always protecting their wealth. They fear of losing it. But in the kingdom of God, respect is by love. We respect because we love one another. Amen? In verse 1, then Samuel took a flask of oil and poured it on his head and kissed him and said, is it, because, is it not because the Lord has anointed you commander over his what? Inheritance. Look, let me share with you. When God begins to increase, <clears throat> again, the process of increase is cutting loose, not looking back no more. He knows what's what. A sign of maturing in that arena. But what he does is he increases the anointing. Amen? Why is he increasing the anointing? Because he's giving you more. He's giving you more. Does everybody understand that? You know, you can only handle more if he gives you more. You can only do more if he gives you more. It's when you try to go do more without him giving you more of the anointing where things crumble, where people fall, where they get disconnected, they get discouraged. You know, it's amazing to me because as the Lord began to share this with me, I, I, he brought me back to the second store because we opened up another store. And prior to opening that store, when I drove by that place, I, the Spirit of the Lord just came on me. And I just sensed such a peace. And I just knew it was going to be ours. But common sense said, what the heck? No way. We're not ready for this. But I had to release common sense. Lord, you know exactly what's what. And the anointing increased. No matter what I did, there was a connect. Everything was instant, 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 instant. Everything just flowed. And that's when I was saying, the Lord is here. He's here with us now. It was the word say, ask when he is near. And I was like, hallelujah. He's, he, he's near. Okay, dad, we need a, what do I need? You need a rug. Okay, cool. I get a call from Lowe's. From somebody that works there says, the spirit of the Lord told him that I have, he had a rug for me. I'm like, what? This guy from Lowe's. We go there, he's got a, so, there's this huge, commercial, gorgeous rug. 
And, 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 and the guy says, man, because you, you were on my heart. He says, uh, uh, somebody failed and couldn't do it. And they had this rug here. And I said, well, he says, you know, they might give it to you for a thousand bucks. It's like a, almost a $4,000 rug. I said, whoa. He says, I'm going to go talk to him. I said, well, see if we can get it for a five. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he was close. I'm asking. I knew the anointing was there. I was having favor and everything. <laughs> and the guy came out. I ended up leaving with, for that, with that thing for 450 bucks. And he got free installation. <laughs> Snap. That was just the beginning. I mean, the landlord said to me, I want you here. I'm like, what? I want you here. Lord, he, he needs a, the rent needs to be this. The guy you me to rent for that. Anything I was asking for, I was like, whoa. <laughs> I mean, everything just flowed into place. That place was built out and whatever, ready to go in three weeks. Praise God. And the first day that we opened, paid the rent. Praise be to God. Uh, God wants to give more. Amen? He wants to give more. But there, he wants to increase in pr his presence more. So there's got to be a more of a thirst and hunger. There's got to be an area to where you're willing to do whatever it takes. Every time, you, every time something comes up about you, no. Well, you know, I, I, I need, No! What do you want? Amen? So there's got to be a more of a death to self, a more of a denial to self. People are dancing with themselves. Not only dancing with themselves, they're dancing with deception. Two things that squeeze out the love of God. Dancing with deception and dancing with yourself. We'll talk more about that. Glory. Are you ready? So here... Here's Samuel getting ready to anoint the first king called Saul. Amen? And what does he tell him? In verse 3, he says, look it. You shall go on forward from there and come to a terebinth, uh, 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 a terebinth tree of Tabar. There are three men going up to God at Bithel will meet you. They're going up to where? Called the what? Higher ground. One carrying three young goats, another carrying three loaves of bread, and another carrying the skin of wine. And they will greet you and give you two loaves of bread, which you shall receive from their hands. After that, you shall come to the hill of God, higher ground, where the Philistine garrison is. And it will happen when you've come there to the city that you will meet a group of prophets coming down from another high place with string instruments, a tambourine, a flute, and a harp before them, and they will be prophesying because the anointing will be on them. And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you. Why? Because you hung around them. See, the more you hang around the anointing, the more it comes on you. And you will prophesy with them, be turned into a what? Another man. Why? Because God said, look, at, I'm anointing you to take care of my inheritance. I want to give you my thing. Look, at, that's called stewardship. There is an anointing for increase of stewardship. But before stewardship, there must be soldier. You must be one who's willing to battle. It always starts with battle. You are first his son and daughter. Amen? Then you become his servant and steward. But in that, you become his soldier before you can handle anything. Why? Because you must be able to protect and fight what God has given you. Amen? So the, a steward, to have stewardship, is one who protects the things. And you must earn his trust. How you're handling your finances now. How you're handling the things that God has given you. He said, well, look at it. If you can't handle the things that I give you in the physical, how can you handle the things in the spiritual? What are you doing what I'm giving you now? Are you expanding my kingdom? Are you expanding your closet? He expanded, you know, hello, is everybody getting it? What are you doing with my kingdom? Glory. Higher ground, increase of the anointing. Look at it. The anointing is the eternal presence and power and truth of God Almighty. Amen? 
But in that, there's a, a fruits. And, and, and in this, listen, God, when that anointing comes, there's an increase of provision, protection, and promotion. Increase of what? Provision, protection, and a promotion. The Word of God says in Romans 14, let's go there for a second. Is everybody okay? Are you blessed? Are you learning? Are you willing? Are you dead? Ooh. <laughs> and that song was running through me. We're going up to the high place. Anyway. Romans 14, verse something. Verse 17. Are you, uh, verse 16. Are you ready? Let's speak it together. Therefore, do not let your good be spoken of as evil for the kingdom of God. Say it with me. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking or filling your closet. But what? Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. It is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit, which is God's love. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Now, in the Holy Spirit is the anointing. He's the carrier of the eternal presence and power and truth of God Almighty. That's why the baptism of the Holy Spirit brings an anointing. But anointing can always increase. Amen? Praise God. So when the anointing increases, righteousness increases. Peace increases. Joy increases. Love increases. Love increases. Love. What is love? 1 Corinthians 13. Hallelujah. First Corinthians 13, verse 1. Wonderful. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels, but not, have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clinging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains but not love, I am what? Nothing. Well, okay, now let's think about this. Where there's an increase of love, is there an increase of the anointing? Yes. So that means when there's no love, there's no increase of God's presence. Amen? It's it's backing off. Why? Something's not right. There's something that's offending him. Amen? And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. What is love? Verse 4, let's speak it. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Is not puffed up does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in what? Truth. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. In other words, everything's going to come to an end, but love. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away with. Verse 11. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Look, you don't increase until you start putting away some things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. And now abide in faith, 
which is present. Amen? It's actually present sight, spiritual sight. Hope is seen in the future. And love, which is God's presence and anointing. Amen? These three, but the greatest of these is love. Why? Because the greatest is the anointing. The eternal presence, power, and truth. Is everybody okay? Are you with me? Did I lose anyone? Grab hold. 2 Timothy 3. Higher ground. 2 Timothy... No. Yeah, 2 Timothy 3. Which... In verse 1, we've heard this multiple times, but this is where we are at. This is why we need more of God's presence. That's why we need more of the anointing. That's why we need to get to higher ground. This is happening. Things are going on right now in the world. Look at the battles. Look at what's going on. You ever watch the news lately? Man, let me tell you, in another week, you need to go to eternallibrary.org and find out what we're putting up there. It will blow you away. What's going on? Verse 1, know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. Hey, perilous times are here. And they're not going to get better. They're going to get worse, aren't they? For men will be lovers of what? Themselves. Lovers of money. Sound familiar? Boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good. Traitor, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but denying its power. And from such people do what? Turn away. Don't associate. Amen? Don't yoke yourself with them. Tell them. Verse 6. Aren't you glad we're not religious? For this sort are those who creep into households and ministries and neighbors and make captives of gullible men and women, loaded down with sins, led away with various lusts and desires, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth that way. Because they may know it, but they don't practice it. And you don't, they don't practice it because they don't see. And they don't see because the anointing. Not increasing. Remember, the anointing, anointing always brings sight to see. Amen? It brings sight. Everyone say, the anointing brings sight to see, which is called faith. Glory. All right? Uh, verse 8. Now, as Janus and Jabiris resisted Moses, so did these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds disapprove concerning the what? Faith. But they will progress no further, for their folly will be manifested to all, as theirs also was. But you have, a, you have carefully what? Followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch, Laodicea, Lystra, what persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution because it's training for reigning. But evil men and impostors will do what? They'll grow worse and worse, deceiving and being what? Deceived. But you must, everyone say, I must, continue in the things which I've learned and heard assured of, of knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures. That means in the moment that you've been saved. Which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Second Peter 2. Perilous times. People will be lovers of themselves, boasters, not uh, pleasure seekers instead of God seekers. 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 12. He said, these are like natural what? Brute beasts made to be caught 
and destroyed, speak evil of things they don't understand, and utterly perish in their own corruption, and will receive the wages of unrighteousness as those who count it pleasure to carouse in daytime. They are spots and blemishes carousing in their own what? Deception means they're dancing with deception. See, when you're dancing with deception, nothing can come in. You actually squeeze out God's love. That's what deception does. It squeezes out God's love. And what replaces God's love? Lust. And that will prevent you from going to higher ground. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> they are spots, blemishes, carousing with their own deception while they feast with you, having eyes full of what? Adultery. And that cannot cease from sin, enticing unstable souls. They have a heart trained in covetous practices and are what? Accursed children. They are what? Accursed children. Why? Because they're dancing with deception. Again, two things. People that are dancing with deception and dancing with themselves. Go to Galatians 5. Can't go to higher ground. Squeeze out God's love, brings in lust. People just think that lust is lusting after the opposite sex. No. Addiction is lust. It's an overwhelming desire. You can lust after clothes. You can lust after cars. You can lust after anything. Amen? Amen? You can lust after your own self because you're first. Galatians 5. Oh, glory. Is everybody okay? Amen. Are you ready? Galatians chapter 5. Um, Galatians 5. Ooh, nice. Verse 9. Uh, I'm in Ephesians. Galatians 5. In verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are what? Adultery. 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 It's amazing how many believers think they can just live together and sleep together and okay. Well, she's a good Christian. No, she ain't. Well, he's a good Christian. No, he's not. There's no connect there. Because if there was connect, they wouldn't be doing. Hello? There's no love. It's lust. And there's certainly no presence of God. None. There's the presence of sin, which is called the presence of evil. Evil is called, the presence of evil is called sin. What is it trying to do? Get a person to obey its presence, its voice. Then it goes into transgression. That is the act of obeying the presence of evil. Then iniquity is the outcome of when a person does the act, it brings a curse on themselves and their family line. Hello? So you got sin, which is the presence of evil, transgression, which is the act of the presence of evil, and iniquity that comes a curse on the, on the self and the family line until it's broke. All things are going to be broke by the power of God Almighty. Amen. Amen. Praise God. All right, let's go a little further. Verse 20. Uh, let's start at verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you before, and just as I also told you in time past, that those that practice such things will not inherit eternal life or the kingdom of God. Amen? Verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love, Love joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness. It says self-control. It means control over yourself. That's the old man. You must maintain control over the old man. The only way to do that is to be led by the Spirit so it can be crucified. But that's still management, isn't it? You must constantly manage your old man. And I don't mean your spouse. <laughs> Although some of y'all try to. <laughs> uh, 
Alleluia. We won't go there at this time. We'll hold that for another day. Self-control is control over self. Has everybody got it? Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its what? Passions and desires. If you live in the Spirit, let us walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another or envying one another. Again, when you dance with deception and you dance with self, it squeezes out the love of God and it brings in lust. And you're first. Me, 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 me. Ephesians 4. And then one more scripture. Hang in there. Press through. Die. That three-letter word, that's kick. Did I tell you that the word kick means simple? I mean snap. That snap means simple? Yeah. Snap. Make it snappy. All in the world we see it to look at, hurry up! But in the spirit we say, make it simple. Snap. You want to say, oh, snap. <laughs> Ephesians 4, verse 1. <laughs> Would you read it with me? I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, what? Beseech you to walk worthy of the calling which you were called. With all what? Lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is only one body and one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. And I want to close it. Sec, uh, 1 John chapter 2. Humble. The word says, humble yourself before the mighty hand of God and he will exalt you in due time. Higher ground means higher, more anointing. Amen? But there's a price. It's called cooperation. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. Do not what? Love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away in the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Little children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made what? Manifested or exposed, that none of them were of us. But you have a what? An anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. In other words, you're able to see. I've not written you because you don't know the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the anointed one and is anointing, the Christ, the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. He is an antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Therefore, let that abide in you which you have heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised us, eternal life. These things I have not written to you concerning those who try to what? To deceive you. To dance with you in deception. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teach you. In other words, you sh we should know. If we're really walking in the Spirit, we'll know. If we're really walking in the Spirit and, and under the anointing, we're connected. We're not going to do something without asking. What do you think, Dad? What do you think, Holy Spirit? Amen? 
Don't lean on your own understanding. Why? Because you want to go to a higher ground, another place. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things. How many of y'all know that he teaches you? The Holy Spirit teaches us. We don't want to be taught by men. What's teaching you right now is the anointing. It's not a dude here. It's the anointing. Amen? But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie and just that it has taught you, you will what? Abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him. That when he what? Appears, we may have the confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of him. Amen? Higher ground. Everyone has a choice. That's what's called free will. Amen? We need to break off the dancing with deception and self. When you get in at a place where we desire more of the anointing. Double portion. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word today. We are honored and blessed. We thank you for telling us what you're getting ready to do and preparing us so that we can overcome more of the evil presence and more of the things that the enemy is trying to come against us. We ask that not only protect this seed, but allow it to grow and bear fruit for your glory and let it penetrate every part of our being that we will not be just people of sight, but we will be able to see in Jesus' name. Anybody said amen?